another fun little fact, a century ago, there were over 100 seed companies between Ithaca and Rochester. Now there are three. <laughs> Fruition is the only seed company that grows seeds. Welcome back to the Sunshine Farm. I'm Jen. Today we're going to take a little bit of a road trip with a new friend of mine that I met through the Extreme Garden Makeover series. I'll be sharing her garden in just a little bit. I helped her start her first garden. Her name is Allison. She has two adorable kiddos and you'll get to meet them soon. And we are going to be driving down to Naples, New York, which is about an hour from where we live. We'll be going to a watermelon party which is hosted by Fruition Seeds, my favorite seed company, and the local seed company to upstate New York. The owner of Fruition Seeds, Petra, she actually came by our farm recently, and I'll share that video too. I have really enjoyed getting to know her, and I really admire her company and what she does. So join me for a watermelon seed party. You can cut that. Ooh, good job. Look at that. You got a stick. I don't know if you're getting the grass. Can you try to get the green grass? Ooh, good job. Oh, don't put it there though, put it in the woods. <laughs> put it in the middle. Okay, we're here. Time for some watermelon. Compost. If I ask you. Oh, oh no. Oh, So good. Oh gosh, so the dahlias are so pretty. So we're gonna get a farm tour from Petra. So I'll take you guys with us. And then we'll eat more watermelon. Oh, thank you. Yeah, come right over here. Oh, and come close to me too. I hate being all by myself. Well, welcome. Welcome to Fruition. Uh, who has been here before? Yes! Awesome! Well, welcome one, welcome all. And I trust this won't be the last time that you are here at Fruition Seeds, whether it's your first or your 15th. My name is Petra. I'm Petra Page Man. And when people ask me if I have babies, if I have children, I say yes, and great, great, great grandchildren. <laughs> and on days like today, you can eat them. <laughs> Did you all get some watermelon? <laughs> this is a fifth generation farm of Naples. And Matthew and I started this farm in 2012. We started it because we love seeds and growing seeds. And I'd like to tell you why I love seeds. I love seeds because they grow food and then I get to share that food with people I love. <laughs> So yeah, we focus on growing organic, regionally adapted varieties. We have over 400 varieties of vegetables, flowers, and herbs. And I'm curious if anyone recognizes this plant. It's one of my favorites. A and so I was seven years old and I like to grow things. I like to eat things. I like to grow unusual. So I said, Dad, let's grow peanuts. So we grew peanuts. We grew five peanut plants. We harvested five peanuts at the end of the season. <laughs> and I announced to my father that that was a waste of garden space. I kind of vowed that I would never grow peanuts again. I would never waste so much garden space. And so as the fates would have it, you know, fast forward, lo and behold, we harvested 23 peanuts average on these plants. Wow. The hottest, the wettest, the driest, the coldest. Our climate is changing. It's becoming more extreme. We're seeing that every day, every season. And so we're saving these seeds, regionally adapting them out of great joy and out of great love for our countless ancestors who have put these varieties into our hands. Rising on the so do we grow this seed, this rice for seed, or do we eat it? We do both. So certainly the vast majority of it we grow just to put in packets to share with you. Um, but we also, we have, admittedly we grow one and then we have one meal a year that we share with friends and it's just kind of our special, it's our special rice meal of the year. But it's very delicious, it's a short grain rice. I'll walk you through the process of turning this into dinner. 
So you'll wait for these green seed heads to turn gold. And then here's the trick. If you're saving them for seed, you don't want to do this. But if you're going to eat them, toast them. Like a 350 degree oven for about 10, 15 minutes. They'll get golden brown, nice and crispy. And at that point, you can go like this. So toast them and then you'll go like this and it just falls off. And at that point, I like to just go and then I send it to the box fan, which a box fan blows air and then I can pour the seeds over the box fan. We have lots of videos on YouTube, by the way. How many of you have seen our YouTube channel? Yes, awesome. So we have hundreds of videos on YouTube that are informative, some are very entertaining. <laughs> So I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite watermelon out there, August Ambrosia. I'm really proud of it. It's actually a fruition original variety that we developed with Cornell. And I'm really excited about it because it kind of entered us into this space of breeding new varieties. I think of heirlooms as history. So history happened, but it's also happening. We're making history right now at the seventh annual Fruition Seeds Watermelon and the Dahlias party. So it's so essential that we have Beethoven symphonies, but can you imagine if we stopped writing new music and new books? And we need to do this with plants as well. We need to constantly be doing this in all parts of our culture that is really the art of culture. The really like the living, breathing part. And so developing these new varieties that are really well adapted to our climate, to our soils, to our tastes, is the work that makes us really jump out of bed in the morning. Does, do you all know Liz Henderson, by the way? <laughs> so Liz Henderson started one of the first CSAs in the country, and she also wrote the book on CSAs, and she's a watershed matriarch of all things food and justice, in my heart, but also in the world. And here's the sad truth. A century ago, for any given crop, for example, peppers, they would have had 10 public plant breeders, plant breeders breeding for public use, not private industrial interest, but for public good for any one crop, so 10 public plant breeders for a pepper crop. Right now, Michael Mazurik is the only plant breeder for peppers and peas, oh, and cucumbers, and summer squash, and winter squash. This is across the board, all across the country. Our public universities have tightened these belts for generations, and public plant breeding is definitely this tiny little taste of what it once was. Diversity is the foundation of life on Earth. And if we ask the wrong question, we will get the wrong answer every time. For example, if I ask, how do I get rid of these weeds? All of a sudden I'm thinking, okay, I've got a hoe, I've got a flame weeder, I've got Roundup. What if I change the question a little bit? What if I ask, why are there so many weeds? A really different question. So we live in a culture right now that we don't ask good questions and we certainly don't ask hard questions. We have a lot of people to feed. We have multinational chemical corporations 100% invested in extracting every dollar they possibly can. They've invented this thing called Roundup that will make everything around it die that it touches, every plant die. So what if we can take this Roundup Ready gene, put it into soy, into corn, into all the commodity crops. Brilliant, we can grow, we can spray Roundup, this plant won't die, great. I think we all know the end of this story. It's a never ending cycle. And just like penicillin, probably within my lifetime, will no longer be effective because it is one single strain that is the case of GMOs. Yes, we might be feeding people, um, we're force feeding people because it's not really food and they're not nutrient dense food being grown on living, breathing soils. Again, my two cents. But if we are just leveraging, putting all our eggs in this one basket, they're go we're asking the wrong question and we will get the wrong answer. If we aren't looking for diversity in our systems, we are just asking for utter calamity. It's one of our greatest gifts here at Fruition Seeds to be thinking outside the box and growing outside the box, to actually be growing in living dynamic soil. If we try to address these issues with, like, I think, scalability, 
is also how we got to this place. You know, we're like scale, how do we make it as big as possible, as fast as possible, because we have this crisis. If we are going to survive, we need to, that diversity has to translate onto every level that's yes, genetic, and it's also cultural, and it's also decentralized. So it's gonna look like a lot more fruition seeds. Another fun little fact, a century ago, there were over 100 seed companies between Ithaca and Rochester. Now there are three. <laughs> Fruition is the only seed company that grows seeds. The others are distributors. So I think in another century that pendulum swings. Of course it does. So I think in another century we're going to see the exact opposite happening, which is decentralization. <laughs> Hey Max, is it tasty? Yeah. You have you have watermelon juice all over your face. The guy later who wasn't there in the morning. Yeah. Migraine. Is that when, when a bird gets them, it releases a toxin. Yeah. They, have, well, they you know really have four wings. This is the ultimate challenge, picking up okay with the baby, <laughs> yes, wearing that a baby. That would be the hardest part. Yeah. You can hand them to me too, I can hold them. Got your little panda bear helper. Yeah, yeah. She's so chill. Can we hold it? We can play our favorite song, dance into it all night long. With you, I feel, with you, I feel something. Cause we're both so unashamed. We're not playing any, playing any. What are you doing? I want Do it again. Bye! <laughs> Everyone did a dead heading for us, like the flower growers call it. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, yeah. So where is this garden that you blog about? Um, we're in, we're just outside of Rochester. Okay. Is there a pretty vibrant um, gardening small farm scene in Rochester? No. Like our goal is permaculture no-till. Mm -hmm. So our uh, channel and stuff is called Sunshine Farm. Sunshine, if you ever. cool. You know, are, are bored and need something to look yeah, at. <laughs> that happens. And yeah. There's better places I could spend that time. Yeah. So I'll, yeah. I'll spend it on Sunshine Farm. Yeah. What do you like about the farm? <laughs> what do dino dinosaurs say? <laughs> what do they eat? Meat. Meat? Some of them. So, see how she has like the wood chips down as like a weed yeah. block? Yeah. Look at those beets. There's some big beets. That's what we're gonna have, man. If all goes well. Kale, carrots that went to seed, or Queen Anne's lace. I don't know which one. Holy basil is really fun. Some kind of alliums, little onions. What do you want? Um, it's called ground cherry. Ground cherry. You want a ground cherry? Okay, let me find one more. <laughs> <laughs> what was that sound you just made? How's it taste? Good. Good. <laughs> he likes these. <laughs> Spicy. Do you want another one? <laughs> He's such an adventurous eater in the garden. I love it. Hey, yummy. Try it again. What's it taste like? Good. So we picked flowers, we ate watermelon, we bought some plants, seeds, and now we're going to hit the road. It's a pretty big bouquet. <laughs> 